Hi, I'm Chris Couch. I teach in comparative literature here at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Um, I also worked in the comics industry for 10 years, and we're very pleased to have this, the first show of political graphic novels ever done anywhere. Um, it's called Direct Action Comics, and that's a complex pun. Um, it deals with direct action, which is non-electoral activism to change society, and then also Action Comics, which is where Superman first appeared in the 1930s, and the original Superman was the friend of the workers influenced by socialism. So when we decided to do the show, we thought um, people think of uh, comics as being about like superheroes beating each other up, but we wanted to show how complex the political themes in graphic novels could be. So we came up with a set of themes. One of them is direct action, um, which is uh, non-electoral action to change society, like marches and strikes. Um, another one is uh, gender issues. Um, another one is ability and disability and health. Um, so we have a variety of themes that run through here, race, class, things like that. So it's a complex show that deals with a lot of themes, uh, including the Civil Rights Movement and American Indian Movement. Um, one of the best Native American graphic novels to date um, is Red Power by Brian Wright, Wright McLeod. Um, his uh, graphic novel deals both with the history of uh, settled colonialism in the Americas and with the American Indian Movement of the 1960s and 1970s. Um, he lent us uh, beautiful preliminary pencil drawings that show uh, the quality of his work, and some of them illustrate uh, not just historical, but also religious and cosmological ideas. One of the key documents in the history of political graphic novels is Art Spiegelman's Mouse, which won a Pulitzer Prize in uh, 1985. Uh, it's a Holocaust memoir, but it also deals with contemporary political issues about race and anti-Semitism. After 9-11, um, Art Spiegelman did a series of comic strips that were run in the Jewish Daily Forward and other newspapers um, called In the Shadow of No Towers um, about the impact of 9-11 uh, on the community in New York and on politics. Seth Tabachman, who is the founder of World War III, illustrated um, an annual radical uh, comic book that comes out of the Lower East Side of New York, um, did a graphic novel about the uh, um, lawyer Leonard Weinglass who defended the Chicago 7 and defended a group of demonstrators on the UMass campus in the 1980s who were trying to get the CIA off campus. Uh, Seth will be here uh, next Wednesday uh, with some of the people who were in the action to talk about his work.